I-16 Property Plant and Equipment Dismantling, Removing and Restoration Costs This is a summary of the total content of I-16. Accounting treatment comprises recognition, measurement and disclosure. This presentation focuses on measurement and specifically initial measurement. The elements of cost has been discussed in a previous presentation. This presentation focuses on dismantling, removing and restoration costs. Paragraph 16 of I-16 highlights the elements of cost. Paragraph A and B has been discussed in a previous presentation. This presentation focuses on paragraph C. The cost of an item of PPE comprises the initial estimate of the costs of dismantling and removing the item and restoring the site on which it is located. Let's break that down. We are busy with initial measurement. All items of PPE are initially measured at cost. An element of this cost is the initial estimate of dismantling, removing and restoration costs. Let's look at an example of this. A company owning a mine has a current obligation in terms of mining legislation to restore the environment where the mine is operating back to its original state at the end of the mine's useful life. So for just having this mine, which is generating future economic benefits to the entity, the entity has an obligation to restore the environment back to its previous state at the end of the mine's useful life. So the obligation is there just because the entity has this mine. Let's look at the accounting treatment of this. If this is the situation, the entity needs to capitalize to the carrying amount of this PPE item, the mine, an initial estimate of these costs. These costs will only be incurred at the end of the asset's useful life. Therefore, you can only estimate it at this point in time. You also have to calculate a present value of those costs and that present value will be the amount that you capitalize to the PPE item. These costs can refer to dismantling, removing and restoration costs. It depends on the nature and the type of asset you are dealing with. What is very important is there has to be a current obligation for these costs at the time of initial measurement of that PPE item. Only then will you be allowed to capitalize the cost to the PPE item. This obligation can be incurred either when the asset is acquired or as a consequence of having used the asset. Again, it depends on the type of asset you are looking at. To understand this accounting treatment further, let's revise the accounting treatment of provisions. A provision is also a current obligation of the entity for future expenditure. The accounting in entry is debit expense through profit or loss and crediting the relevant provision in SFP. In this scenario, with the dismantling, removing and restoration costs, you also have this current obligation, so you would still credit a provision. But the difference is that the debit leg, the debit entry, will now be recognized to the PPE item. And it will be at the present value of those costs. In summary, the entity must therefore have a present legal or constructive obligation for these costs in order to include such cost in the cost price of the PPE item. If no obligation exists, these costs will be deducted from the residual value of the PPE item because it will be incurred actually at the end of the useful life and there were no previous obligation for that, 
you will deduct it from the proceeds of selling the asset at the end of its useful life for purposes of determining residual value. Example, you purchased a plant for 50,000 Rand. The estimated current residual value at the end of its useful life of five years is 5,000 Rand. Let's calculate the depreciable amount. It will be the cost of 50, less residual value 5,000, 45,000 Rand. Assume now the same information as in A, but there's also dismantling cost of 1,500 Rand that will be incurred at the end of the asset's useful life. That 1,500 is the current value, the present value. First scenario. Let's calculate the depreciable amount if these dismantling costs can be rec recognized as a provision in terms of the standard on provisions. It is therefore a current obligation. Then you will capitalize to the asset's cost, the 1,500, and from that cost, you'll deduct the residual value of 5,000, giving you a depreciable amount of 46,500. What is the depreciable amount going to be if you cannot recognize these dismantling costs as a provision? Therefore, you do not have a current obligation at initial measurement. Then the depreciable amount will be calculated as follows. You will still have the cost of 50, but now you will deduct the dismantling cost from the residual value to get to a net residual value. And you would still get the same depreciable amount. But what's different? What would the cost price be in scenario one? The cost would be the 50,000 plus the 1,500. It's capitalized to the asset. In scenario two, however, the cost will only be 50,000. As you do not have an obligation, you cannot capitalize this cost to the cost price of PPE. So although the depreciable amounts are the same and the depreciation expense is going to be the same, the carrying amount will be different because the cost is different.